There's something about rap and hip hop that allows the musician to infiltrate the soul of the audience. That's what's always attracted me to this type of music. Over the last three years, people have been asking me, how can hip hop coexist with hymns from the 17 and 1800s? Hymns tell the story of starting out in this low place, then making something of yourself from nothing. And that's rap. That's hip hop. This same narrative is the story of Robert Robertson and his hymn, Come Now Mount. When Roberts was just a boy, his father died in what I believe was a drive-by shooting. Weapons were less accurate in the 1700s, and people say this is unrealistic, but carriages were a lot slower, so I think that would make up for the inaccuracy of the weapons. When his father died, there was no welfare, there was no state-sponsored anything, so he was left on his own, having to work, having to go to the streets, and so he got a job in order to eat. This also left him without any guidance, turning to gangs, turning to crime. He eventually joined a gang, the gang that would take over his block. One day when Robert's gang was harassing this fortune teller um, on the street by making her drink liquor and, and whatever, all sorts of things, and forcing her to tell their fortunes for free, um, she told Robert that his fortune was to grow old with his kids and his grandchildren. As a man ready to die, ready to take a bullet at any time, this really knocked him back. Robert later said the words, if I'm going to live to see my children and grandchildren, he thought, I'd have to change the way I was living now. At this point, Robert decided to go hear G-dubs, or George Whitfield for you non-gangsters, but in order to do it, he decided to convince his friends, the 8th Street Killers, to mess with this meeting or this church service. Whitfield preached on this text, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you from what's to come, which totally wrecked Robinson. For three years, he struggled with this. He went to drugs, to alcohol, to women, to all sorts of things, trying to fill this void of, of realization of, of, of what he needed and in, in his misery. But sometimes in life, you've got to go against what others expect. You've got to focus on what you feel is the right thing. Robinson made his peace with God. He left the gang lifestyle, he left the drugs, the women, the rock and roll, and he decided to become a Methodist pastor. Two years later, he wrote this hymn that encapsulated how he felt and how he was experiencing his time with God. A hymn that we sing today called, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. However, the last verse of this hymn begins with, Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel thee. Robert began to struggle with complacency. There's this story that goes, Robinson was hanging out on this carriage and this woman was humming this song and she turned to Robinson and said, do you know what I'm humming? And Robinson re 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 responded, um, knowing the song, Madam, I am poor and unhappy. I wrote that hymn many years ago. If I could give a thousand words, which I cannot, I'd do anything to get back to the place that I felt when I wrote it. We really don't know what Robinson was feeling at the end of his life. But like many rap narratives, it was filled with ups and downs. With money, with women, with gold chains and rings, with backwards or slightly offset caps, with ferocious dogs, and with all sorts of other paraphernalia like champagne hot tubs and the uncanny ability to make up new words based on already established ones. 
The future of covering hymns like Robinson's is up in the air. I don't expect many people to like or tweet my work, but I know when it comes on the radio, people will hear it and Google it asking the question, what did I just hear?